Hey everyone, it's Scott here. Just at Barangaroo at Sydney. See the harbour here. Beautiful day. Okay, let's get into it. I want to talk about the hidden impact of interstate migration on property prices. This is something that not many experts talk about, but when you understand that property is all about supply and demand, and where there is very little supply and a lot of demand, that's population increase, that is going to drive property prices. Now it happens at a state level, a capital city level. It also happens at a suburb level. And I'm spending millions of dollars every year to work out where those growth suburbs are. But I wanna share with you right now, one part of that research, which is interstate migration, these numbers are gonna really surprise you. Let's take a look at the correlations here. Now to understand this fully, we're gonna be looking at net interstate migration. So we're gonna look at all the people into a state that have come from within Australia. So we're not looking at overseas migration. We're not looking at natural births. And then we're then going to look at the people within that state that leave the state, not overseas, but leave it to move to another state. That's gonna give you net interstate migration. So let's dive right into the data. Now, this column here shows the percentage of net interstate migration relative to the state's overall population in 2020. Now, why is this important? Because it gives you a sense of scale on a percentage basis, how much of a state's population growth is driven by people moving in and out from within the country. Now take a look at Queensland. Queensland stands out with a net migration of 150,000 people, which is almost 3% of its population base. This is a 3% growth in population from interstate migration alone. It's substantial and it's had a direct effect on housing prices in Queensland. Western Australia, for example, while having a smaller net migration number, 41,000 people, still sees a strong impact on its population at 1.56%. And take a look at the capital growth. Now, on the other hand, Victoria has a negative net migration of minus 0.84%. And New South Wales is even lower at negative 1.63%. Now, these negative rates mean that a significant portion of the population is leaving, which has a critical impact on property prices in that state. Now, of course, there are other things at play, okay? There's international migration, where 80% of all international migrants do come to Sydney and Melbourne. So that helps to keep the prices in those cities on the up and up, but you can see the huge impact of interstate migration on the other capital cities, Perth, Adelaide, Western Australia. Let's take a look at how this migration has impacted property prices. States with positive net migration percentages have experienced significant capital growth in property prices. Look at Queensland again. A 3% increase in population from net migration correlates with an impressive 57% in capital growth from 2020 to 2024. Take a look at Western Australia with 1.56% net interstate migration relative to its population. We've seen a 52% increase in capital growth. Now, of course, net interstate migration is not the only factor. There are actually 300 factors that we do look at to predict which suburbs are going to boom, but net interstate migration is a very important one and often overlooked. Now let's talk about the state's losing population. Victoria and New South Wales have negative net migration percentages, meaning more people are leaving than coming in. This lack of inbound migration correlates with significantly lower growth in house prices. Victoria's capital city housing prices grew by just 14% and New South Wales by just 30%, far lower than Queensland, Western Australia and Adelaide. This goes to show that even though Vic and New South Wales are major economic centers, their negative migration means less demand for housing. Even though the international migrants are predominantly coming there, it means less capital growth in those time periods because of the boom in net in state migration in those other areas. Now, of course, we've got to look at demand population. We've also got to look at supply. That's going to drive it too. So these numbers don't directly correlate because as I said, there are 300 other factors. And one of those other factors, one of the big major ones on the other side of the supply demand spectrum is supply. So here are the key takeaways for investors and also importantly, crucially, policymakers and government. Investors should be paying attention to states with positive net migration as they're more likely to see increases in demand and property prices. Even a small percentage increase in population can make a big difference. So what is driving this massive net interstate migration? Look at Queensland, 150,000 people net in and New South Wales, about 130, 40,000 people net out. What's driving this? The key thing guys 
is livability and affordability. So what happens in Sydney, you may be on 150,000 as an example for your income, and you need to be looking at a home at one to 1.5 million. You can take your 150,000 income, get the same income, maybe even more in Queensland, but pay half price for your property. Take a look at 2020, the differences in the median house price between New South Wales, AKA Sydney, and Queensland, basically Brisbane, right? 80% of that market is Brisbane. So take a look at the differences. So that is attractive. And that's why we've seen 150,000 people from other states on a net basis come into Queensland. And this has driven the prices up. Now think about this. If you're out of state, if you're from Melbourne, if you're from Sydney, you've got the money, you've just sold your house in Sydney for 1.5 million. You're looking at a similar home or even a better home, a much larger home, for just seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars, you're willing to bid more on that property because the perceived value is that property is worth more to you, and you've got the money from the Sydney house market. So you're transferring that capital from New South Wales, Sydney, over to Queensland. You can buy more, and you're competing, and you're at auctions, and you're bidding against other Sydney siders, about one hundred and forty, hundred and fifty thousand of them, on those properties, and that leads to this massive price growth. So you can say for Queensland, for example, limits on supply, local demand, but mainly it's that interstate demand of people leaving Melbourne, leaving Sydney, and actually moving into Brisbane, which has driven these huge increases. Now guys, if you can pick in the next three to five years where the majority of the interstate migration is going to be, especially where Sydney siders, who are the most cashed up people are going to go, if you can figure that out, then you will know where the biggest capital growth is going to be. Now I'm gonna drop you a hint right now, because take a look at Melbourne right now, it's had barely any price growth for its house prices. Now what that means is four, five, six years ago, it was not the best position for affordability, but now Melbourne looks incredibly affordable. Perth is still affordable comparatively. Brisbane is still affordable in some areas. And again, the median house price in Brisbane is up around that 1 million mark. There's still areas close to Brisbane where you're still paying five, six, 700,000. So yes, median house price is one indicator, but you've got to look at the outer suburbs around these areas to see if there are still areas there. So a little bit of joke, I get known as that three boom areas guy, the guy that's got the three boom areas, the three areas that are going to boom. The truth is there's probably 15 to 18 that we have at any point in time, but definitely for most investors, there are three key areas that they could consider and look at within their price budget. Okay, be sure to like this video and also subscribe to this channel so that you can support what we're doing, trying to get all this information out to wealth builders, freedom builders, and people that want to make money from property. But in addition to that, take a close look at the policies which are driving the price growth in this country as well. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you agree or disagree. What have you experienced? Have you recently moved or have you recently thought about moving? I'd love to hear your story in the comments below. Take care, guys.